When I left university back in 1993, somebody prayed for me and I felt a verse of scripture was important. It was a verse from the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 21. Whether you turn to the left or the right, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is a verse that has come to me several times during the years. It has often been at a time of, in my life of change. At times that verse has come to me to confirm a decision at any important point. At other times, it has been God's way of saying, stay on the path I have for you. At one time, somebody prayed it for me and it was crucial to my decision to stay in Liverpool and not to return to York. Without it, I may not have come to All Hallows several years later. I may not be doing what I do now and I may not have met Jenny. Our reading this morning, as we continue our angel festival in Advent, is one of the most well-known angel passages of them all. It is the angel Gabriel's visit to Mary at her home in Nazareth. Gabriel was the angel who brought important messages from God. In the Old Testament, rabbis interpreted the man in linen in Daniel and Ezekiel as Gabriel. And as we heard last week, Gabriel appeared to Zechariah with the news that Elizabeth would bear a son, John the Baptist. And in our reading today, he had the most important message of all, that Mary would bear a son whom she would name Jesus, who would be the son of the Most High God and reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. In other words, the Messiah, the Saviour, that God's people had been waiting for. Of course, Mary was an ordinary girl when she gave birth to Jesus. The Son of God was the son of a teenage mother. This was common at the time. Joseph and Mary were a very average couple in Israel. They probably would have been quite poor. Joseph was a carpenter and his job was seen by some religious leaders as a religious duty rather than a profession. Both Joseph and Mary were descendants of King David of Israel. But at this time, his family was in the poorest state it had ever been. Mary was also related to the traditional priest families of Israel through her cousin Elizabeth. Under Jewish law, an engagement like Joseph and Mary's was treated almost like a marriage and could only be broken by an official divorce. And yet, God had chosen Mary. Mary's response was incredible. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. I wonder if she truly understood what would be ahead of her at this point. Yes, there was the joy of being a mother but she also had to experience giving birth in the stable below the inn. Her and Joseph had to flee the wrath of Herod and escape to Egypt after the visit of the wise men. She had to experience seeing the scorn of religious leaders when Jesus was carrying out his ministry. And she had to see Jesus suffer torture and then death on the cross. She was then witness to the joy of the resurrection. She had no idea what was ahead. And yet she said, may your word to me be fulfilled. She responded with faith. Which I think is a challenge for us. Sometimes God may speak his word to us when we read the Bible, when we pray, or for someone else who may have a verse for us or be able to impart some advice to us. The question is, how do we respond? There are times when I know I have responded positively, but there are also times when I know I haven't. To me, Mary's response, may your word to me be fulfilled, is a response for us all to take to heart. 
Sometimes that word can bring joy, and sometimes it can bring discomfort and difficulty. It is not always an easy path, but it is a path of purpose and blessing. And God is our comfort and will be our guide throughout it. When that word leads our path to being a challenge, he will help us through that. As Gabriel brought that word, Mary responded with faith. Perhaps as Advent draws to a close, close and we move into Christmas, we may look to see God and his word afresh through a renewed reading of the Bible and prayer. And may God give us the courage of Mary to respond by saying, may your word to me be fulfilled. Amen.